Hi folks, it's me again, uh, Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, and don't try to adjust your TV set, uh, I look best in poor lighting. Um, this demonstration is going to be on a, uh, a really cool uh, 1969 uh, Chrysler unit, you've seen this on my web on web website many times, it's a very common uh, very common model, it's a 69 muscle car unit, uh, this went into a Charger, Challenger, uh, possibly the Barracuda and a few others. Uh, so uh, it's been sent in for a uh, modern internal conversion. This was previously converted by uh, another company, and so I uh, I uh, made a valiant attempt to preserve the connector that was on the unit, so that he doesn't have to rewire his uh, his car and speakers and all that stuff. And so we'll just go ahead. Uh, this is set up for a four-speaker system. Um, with common speaker grounding, meaning that we don't get that massive increase in power output and the A-Track doesn't sound quite as bright as if we could have gone with the uh, fully isolated speaker setup, but this is what we have to work with, so this is what we uh, this is what we wired it to, so we'll turn it on, I have her set to FM at the moment. And we'll just do a quick, uh, well first we'll run down the dial, make sure we pick up a few FM stations. Shop has seen a lot in its 100. Word go today. And some well deserved. There's 15 so far. John May. Hi, my dear. Now it, now it goes. Okay, I kind of around 30 stations or so, and now that the pointer is near this, I might, I might as well mention that uh, the uh, previous conversion included the front panel status LED, which we can also put on your radio if you like that. Uh, this On this particular conversion, it's going to light up a yellow for FM, a red for AM, a yellow during aux input, and uh, we'll find out what else it does after uh, we get a little bit more into it. Let's go ahead and tune it to AM or set it to AM real quick. We do that by turning it off and then right back on within about half a second. So here we go. Off on. Okay, now we got a red LED. Okay, and there's the usual three stations we get in my area. So we'll go back to FM so I can demonstrate the, uh, the, the uh, balance and fader controls. We're going to need our speaker our output level meters for this, so let's do that. We're going to rotate our balance control all the way left, right, left, right. Okay, now the previous conversion uh, did not have a front rear fader. Uh, that they could wire to the front panel control. Uh, they um, instead you had a, a rear mounted fader that, you know, if you if you wanted to adjust your front rear speaker balance, you had to crawl into your dash. It's kind of hard to do that when you're on the highway. So now we can do that from the tone control because it is now an Aurora conversion, and now we can adjust our front rear fader we, using the tone control. Going to demonstrate that right now. We're going to give our tone control two turns upward. And then we'll wait for a lady to say fader adjust. So let's let's rotate our control to about center so we've got room to turn it upward twice. And here we go, twice upwards. Fader adjust. Okay, and now. Okay, I messed up there. I hit the balance control at the same time. So let's let's fix the balance and then we'll do this fader adjust again. Okay, here we go. 
turn the tow control upwards twice. Okay, fader adjust, and now, now the same control is adjusting the front rear fade, all the way front, all the way rear, front, rear. Okay, so I left it all the way on the rear setting, so I'm going to have to reset it to center the speakers, so I'll try it one more time, twice upwards. Adjust. Okay, and now I'm going to adjust my fader for a proper speaker balance. There's front, rear. I'm going to center them. Take my hand off the control. Fader set. Fader set. And it keeps that setting, and now you can return this tone control to your optimum listening position. Okay, let's try the aux input real quick. Just a quick tone that I feed into it. You guys know me by now. There's one side, and there's the other side for the for the fader. Let's turn it up a little bit more so you can see it's, it's got full signal on the right hand side as well. Now I have to use in the aux input, there is a 20 second delay before the radio comes back. If you don't like that delay, just turn it off, turn it right back on, the radio will come right back on. Uh, during this 20 seconds, avoid the temptation to turn the volume up and listen for anything, any clue that the unit's working. It's in idle standby, it's in kind of standby status and right about now, it's gonna come back at full volume. So it's really best to just wait for it to come back. Okay, let's try the 8-track function. We've got some... Uh, let's do Bonanza guitars first, just for fun. Uh, no, you know what? Let's try a little Partridge Family. Okay, we don't need these controls anymore. As you can see, different uh, tracks have different uh, levels on the channels. anymore all righty let's try let's put some Ann Murray in here so you can check the speed something a little more familiar and the radio comes back on and there we are that concludes the test everything's working let's make sure that dial light comes on when we do our little thing with that you can just barely see it lighting up just barely okay that concludes the test she's ready to go back to the customer and I'm ready to get on out of here and do something else with my life. I'm Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, and you've just seen what I can do to uh, to your typical uh, AM radio slash A-Track unit, um, make it sound a lot better, and uh, put out more output power in some cases. In this case, we've got roughly the same output power as the original because it's coming, it's going into a grounded speaker system. Uh, so at any rate, uh, my number is 928-533-9666. My website's in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Thank you, Doug, for your business, and we'll see you guys next time.